Stampers. It's Jackie Ballheis from Clumpin' Stampers. Today, we're going to talk about reversible stamps. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? You know, they're kind of fun. Stampin' Up! has a few different sets of them. I'm kind of fingers crossed that we start seeing more and more of these because the concept's really cool. They're just what it says, reversible. You use both sides of the stamp for stamping an image. So I've got some tips to share with you for using reversible stamps. We're gonna talk about how to clean them in between because obviously if you're flipping them on your block, you're gonna have to clean them. And then I have a whole bunch of samples to share with you using the back-to-back -back bloom set. So we'll make a card and then I'll show you several other ones with it. I always like to share lots of ideas with a set of stamps. You know, that's one of the beauties of Stampin' Up! Stamps is when they come in a set that all work together. You've got all kinds of variety and different ways to use the stamps. So without further ado, oh quickly before I go, make sure if you're brand new to following me, first welcome, but two, make sure you subscribe. You'll find the button right down there in the video. And if you like my videos, I love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear what you think of them. Give me a thumbs up or some hearts. Let me know that you like the projects. And also with all of my videos, there's a corresponding blog post over on my website. The link to that post will be right down in the description of the video, again, right down there. And if you follow it over to that blog post, I will have the details of the featured product that project that I'm making today. I'll show pictures of it as well as give the card recipe, which just means all the cutting directions. And I'll have the list of all the supplies I use. So that way, if you'd like to order anything that I share today or anything else Stampin' Up!, I make it real easy for you to place a Stampin' Up! order with me. And then make sure to check out my Frequent Shopper program. I love to give free stamp sets to my frequent shoppers. So without further ado, let's go ahead, flip this camera down, and let's get stamping. So the stamp set we're using is called Back to Back Blooms. Now you'll identify it as a reversible because it'll have the little symbol right here. And quite often they look kind of strange on the page because you see all of these big old blobs, okay? And you'll see here, the blob is just the back side of the stamp. So let's set that aside. And before we stamp a couple of our images, I wanna just share a little tip with you. With these stamps, because we are putting them on the block this way and that way, they get kind of icky after a while. It's because we're putting you know, that ink on, we're touching them. So what I like to do is clean them sometimes, especially if they start not sticking very well, just using these little alcohol pads. I think I got them from Walmart. Um, they're not very expensive at all. But if you use these and you clean both sides of your stamp when it's not sticking well, and actually you could use this, it doesn't have to be reversible, but if you ever have these photopolymer that don't seem to be sticking very well anymore, just grab those alcohol pads, let them dry before you use them, and that will help make them sticky again. And you can see my hands are kind of icky because I did clean before I started here both of these because they were starting to not stick real well. And it, I've used these so often in like pinks and reds that there was a lot of color residue left on there that the alcohol took off. So I'm kind of a mess, but you know, that's okay. So with reversible stamps, you can either stamp, you know, your line image first or your solid, whichever you prefer. It's kind of a personal preference. So I like to do this, the line image first. So that's what we're doing on here. So we're going to do the larger flower and then the smaller one. Now these are just um, a piece of scrap paper because I'm going to actually cut these out with a scissors. Okay. So after we've stamped that one, we need to make sure we clean our stamps. So we're just using the chamois. Okay. That's how I like to clean mine. You know, these chamois, they kind of end up looking pretty bad, but when it doesn't clean well anymore, I just go rinse it under water and it works wonderfully again. And then you peel these off. You want to make sure they're dry and then you're going to flip them over. Now, on, when you flip them over, because you don't have as much of a surface that's touching that block, you do have to give them kind of a good push. I like to even put them on that paper and push down to make sure they're stuck on there good because it's just not as much surface, if that makes sense. And then we're gonna stamp this other side. So I have Seaside Spray for one of my colors. I'm kind of using a, 
a different com combination here that I like. And my pads are brand new. I just replaced them, so they're really juicy and really dark. So I am going to stamp that on scrap paper first, okay? Because I otherwise it was going to get just way too dark for what I was trying to do here. And the same thing with the mint macaron. So let's go ahead and ink that up. I know that one's super dark. And then, let's see, which way does this go? You know, the thing with these are they're not going to match up perfectly. And the second one's always going to be bigger, obviously, which is okay. That's kind of the look you're going for. Now, in this case, I'm cutting them out. But even if you're just stamping them, and I'll show you in a second how they look great like that anyways. Then, since I said we're going to just cut this one out, I need to grab my scissors and we're going to just fussy cut these. And I know we are all so spoiled because we love dies and punches. So that sometimes we got to grab the good old scissors. Now, if you don't have the Stampin' Up! Snips, it is the best scissors for cutting things out. And you'll notice just little tips here for cutting. If you notice my left hand that holds it, um, I'm using that to turn my piece of cardstock. That will make your fussy cutting easier. My right hand, which is the one holding the scissors, hardly moves. All it's doing is just, you know, making the scissors go up and down, and it makes fussy cutting really easy. The other thing with fussy cutting, I like to just leave a little white border all the way around it. That way your whole image will, will show really well. If, you know, if we try to cut right on that line, sometimes we cut part of our image off and we don't want to do that. So let me just cut this one out. There we go. So there are the two images for our card. Well, at least the ones that we're going to cut out. And now I think we're ready to start stamping on the layer that's actually going to go on the card. Now, this one, I don't even know what size it is. This must be probably four and a half, I think. Um, anyhow, remember, the link is down in that video description. That will give you all the measurements to the card. So I make it real easy for you. So what we're going to do is go back to this one that I cleaned recently. And we'll grab our black again. And we're going to do the outline. You know, I always have to double check because when I'm working with reversibles, sometimes I have them on the wrong way and then I get a big black blob instead of the black outline. And all I'm doing is just stamping kind of towards the edge of the paper because ultimately these are going to go on here. So I wanted to come to the edge as must, must, blah, as much as I could. Oh, I'm all tongue tied today. Let's clean that off and then we're going to go ahead and flip it. And I'm using kind of a Let's see that one. Let's stick that one down there. Good. See how sometimes they don't, when you flip them, you got to really push them on there because you just don't have that much surface touching. I'm using real non-traditional colors here. So we've got crumb cake. And again, we want to make sure it's a little bit lighter. And we'll go like so. This is a good example of how you'll see it doesn't match exactly because it's really kind of a mirrored image. But that's the fun look with these stamps. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go like so. Okay, so there are those. And then I have one other image from the stamp set here. And this one, we're actually not gonna do the reversible part of it. We're gonna just go ahead and stamp a few of these. Um, again, kind of come on close to the edge so we make sure they stick out from underneath our flower. Okay, and let's grab some adhesive. And for the first flower, we've got the smaller one and the bigger one. This one, let's see, I don't know which way it goes. We're going to put down flat. Okay, so we use our regular adhesive. And then the second one, we'll go ahead and we'll use our dimensionals. I think you guys know by now, if you follow me, almost every card I make has to have dimensionals on it. But it really does add a lot. And in this case, I... I think kind of gives you some depth with ha having one flower back further and then one up further. And we're going to take a piece of basic black. Um, you know, I, I use black a lot. Number one, it coordinates with everything. And that way you don't feel like you have to have every single color of ca cardstock. But I think it also makes your images just really, really pop. And then we're going to go with a crumb cake card base. So this is pretty earthy tone card. 
Let's just stick that down like so. Now we need a greeting. And like I said, because this stamp set doesn't have a greeting, we can go ahead and pull out the happy thoughts, my all time favorite. Um, nice thing about this card and i've got several samples to show you i could easily at this point make it thank you thinking of you happy birthday and or congratulations and have perfect words for the inside as well well i already did a thinking of you and this is just embossed using white powder on black cardstock we really got this black thing going here um, if you do not know how to heat emboss, leave me a comment and I'll share a link to one of the videos where I actually show how to do it. Okay, I don't show it in all my videos, but some of them I do. So we're going to just put that right there. And then I don't know, I'm feeling like we need a little bit of bling on this one. So I've got some rhinestones sitting here. And, you know, rhinestones are kind of my go-to. There's other um, embellishments that I would... I use sometimes, but I do the same thing. I just like to kind of randomly put three. Three is kind of my number. Um, you can put more if you want, but three just is very eye appealing, I believe. And if you talk to like an art teacher or someone that's into art, they all say do things in odd numbers. So that is our odd number. Now let's go ahead and I probably should have done this part of it before I cleaned my stamps because now we're going to have to clean them again. But, you know, just because I still have the backside on here, we're going to start with the bold image. Um, like I said, you can do it either way. So now you're kind of seeing both ways. So we'll go scrap paper and then we kind of want these coming off the edge so we have room to write a message. And we'll do mint macaron. And let's put this one, how about right up there. And again, now we have to clean. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and flip it over so we'll get our outline part. My chamois isn't very wet, so it's kind of perfect right now. Um, because these dry almost instantly. And then we can go ahead and flip that and we'll come back to our black, ink that up good. And we're gonna stamp it right over our, what looks like a blob. And, and then we'll do the same thing with our smaller one, like so. And you can see how it looks nice, even though it's not lined up perfect. That's kind of the intent of these. And then we could go ahead and add our greeting on the inside of our card and put it together. So let's go ahead and clean up this mess and do the magic of TV. And let me show you a whole bunch of samples. One of my favorite things about Stampin' Up! stamps is the versatility and especially like that happy thoughts. Here we've just got the floral image and I laid these all out exactly the same way. I just use different colors, but then each one of them, you can see where I used a different greeting. Happy birthday, thank you, thinking of you, and congratulations. And then on the inside, we've got those great inside verses that come with that stamp set as well. So I can make a card for any occasion. So there is that set, but I have some other ones to share with you using these reversible stamps. I tried to use a bunch of the different stamps here to just show you the re that reversible image. So here we've got the smaller flower, or actually this is a different one than we used, but you can see how that reverses. And then here's that Happy Thoughts stamp set. And on this one, I use Thank You and the Sending Happy Thoughts both on the front of it. Now I'll have pictures, I won't have all the details on these, but I'll put pictures of these on that blog post as well for you, just so you can see different ways to use these reversible stamps. So again, you can see the leaf is reversed and this flower image is reversed. We've got the front side and the back side to give it that nice color. Uh, let's see, this one was made pretty similar to what I did on the one today. We just used the smaller leaves on this one and a little linen thread and there's our happy birthday. And um, for this one, I actually had one piece of basic white here. And after I stamped it, I just filled it up randomly with the leaves. Again, both sides of it. And then I cut strips and split them on the card. So this would make more a masculine looking card. So even though the stamp set is kind of centers around all those pretty flowers, you can easily make a masculine card as well. So I like you, or I hope you like these additional four ideas using that stamp set. And then just remember, you can hop over to my website, links down there in the description of the video, 
and I'll have the card recipes for this one, pictures of these, and a list of all the supplies I use. And then if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to me. Leave me a comment, email me, whatever works best for you. I am here to help you learn and make quick and easy cards. So until I stamp with you again, have a stamp happy day.